Hey, this is Daron Burton doing a review of the XAV AV150. This is an Android Auto and Apple CarPlay double din stereo head unit. Um, I have it installed in a Freightliner Cascadia. Mine's a 2015 Evolution. I used the stereo cage from the old radio and just slightly modified it. There's a trim piece you can get for the install kit that will go around the, you know, the perimeter of this, but I decided not to install it. I just knew I'd have to hard install it and sometimes I have to service my airline so I'd have to take this off and which will just break it anyway but for me it works um, once again it's Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatible you have to use USB with this head unit it does charge your phone while you're you know listening to audio you can play your audio from you know YouTube Safari most of your apps will play audio through the Apple CarPlay and to get you know to get Apple CarPlay, you plug your phone in. If you have Android Auto, it'll pop up there as well. You just plug your phone in and you just hit that button. And now you have your navigation with Apple CarPlay, which is really nice. Also, some of the apps that you have on here, you know, depending on what it is, they'll like I have Audible. That's that's one of the only apps I have that are compatible with Apple CarPlay, but you know, if you listen to podcasts, that's really nice. Or audiobooks. You got your podcast, news, audiobooks, messages. It will read them out for you. It won't visually show you them, but it will read them out for you. And if you're driving and you get a message, it will let you know who it's from. And it will read it. It will read it out loud instead of you having to, you know, push anything, which is really nice. Uh, you can get to your phone with all your contacts. You can go through music with the music app. Um, now playing shows like if you listen to a podcast now playing is going to be podcast if you're listening to music now playing is going to be your music if you listen to audiobook that's what's that's what it's going to be for now playing and those are pretty much all the features for the apple carplay and apple carplay isn't dependent you know the software model isn't dependent on the actual head unit it's your phone that casts apple carplay to it so whenever you update your phone, you're up, you're actually updating Apple CarPlay as well because that's pushed through your phone, not the head unit. So it will never be out of date, which is nice. As far as this head unit, it has a tuner for the AM, FM. It has a feature for Bluetooth. If you don't want to use Apple CarPlay, you can stream your audio through Bluetooth. You can sync your phone. Um, as far as I haven't done that feature, so I, you know, I'd be lying if I told you it works well or not. I just... I personally haven't used it because it's, you know, I can't be on the phone when I drive anyway. So it's kind of pointless to me. You can get a backup camera for this, which is really nice. And in your settings, one thing I really like about this, that's how you adjust your time. It has language, put it in demo mode, change your time, change if you want the beeps on. You can update the firmware for the actual head unit. You can factory reset it and look at all your licenses and turn the clock time on or off, which is kind of weird because off means on and on means off. Don't really get that. And you also have a, a feature for steering wheel controls. If your feature, if your vehicles, you know, has steering wheel controls, you can that can control the audio. You can do that through this as well. It comes with a separate harness for that to splice in. And as far as sound, there's a button for extra bass. There's a 10 band equalizer, which is nice. You can adjust the gain on each channel for a frequency. They also have different presets if you don't want to do your adjustments yourself. The fully custom one where you can adjust it yourself. I just put it on pop and it kind of works for mostly everything um, if you have a subwoofer you can control it the gain with this you can turn it off or on or off i just keep it in the middle and it also one of the nice things about this is it has a built-in sorry that's dso it has a built-in crossover so i have a subwoofer that i installed so i don't want any of those bass any of that bass going to like the really deep bass it's pointless for that to go through my actual door speakers and my bunk speakers. 
So I set the filter for the high pass at 120 and I also have the subwoofer at 120. So it kind of eclipses right there. So those are, you know, that's still like a bassy tone, but it's not that crazy, like rumbling bass. That's more of like voices. Kind of, if you know, someone has like a deep voice. So my subwoofer, it's not going to amplify someone's voice, you know, make them sound like you got a giant in here. So that's kind of nice. You can also change the phase for your subwoofer, which I just leave it on normal. And it has a thing called DSO. I think it stands for Digital Sound Stage Orientation, or I don't know what the O stands for, but it's for sound stage. So like with my vehicle, the speakers are in the door, which is about waist level for me. So if I set the sound stage to middle, it's going to slightly raise it up and make it sound more balanced. If I put it high, it's going to make it sound like it's coming from, you know, above me, which is nice. So, you know, personal preference, I keep it in the middle. I think it sounds the best because my rear speakers are really high. The rear speakers are all the way up there. Those are the subs that I have. Those are the Kicker Comp C. Those are 12 inch subs. Those are being powered off with a Kicker CXA 800.1 and it sounds really nice. But yeah, that's the, um, that's the head unit. It works really well. It's definitely worth the money. I do think this actual head unit is not being sold anymore. But if you go with the 1000, I think the 100 has a knob instead of this volume rocker, which I don't mind the volume rocker, but it has like an actual knob and it's on the side over here. But this one has a little bit of a bigger screen and it has more watts. This is 55 watts peak power. And I think it's like 30 watts RMS, which is great for powering you know, low end speakers. If you got like component speakers, you definitely want to get a separate amplifier. But if you just got the regular component speakers, um, or like two way, sorry, two way speakers, not components. But if you have component speakers, you'll need an amplifier. If you have regular speakers, you won't need an amplifier. And I got the Kicker. I think this is CS series. I got five and a quarter and six by nines, and they. I'm, you can get up to 100 decibels, 106 decibels with this head unit, no amplifier for the actual speakers, which is nice. So normally, like this truck was at 85 decibels, it doubled the volume. So that's definitely nice. As far as decibel level goes, I think it goes up, if it goes up 10, it doubles your perception of sound. So, um, but yeah, the, the head unit's great. I love it. I got zero complaints. Um, I paid $239 for it. If you can find it on sale, like I said, I think they're going out of stock, so you may have to get a different subwoofer, but sorry, a different head unit, but it's definitely worth, the Sony brand is definitely worth it. As far as sound quality, it's crystal clear. It has a great power output. It doesn't overheat. Um, it connects to Apple CarPlay really well. No hiccups there. So definitely worth your money to buy it. Thanks. Have a good day.